Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 27th June 2016. The first article is related to university and the recent amendments which are proposed by UGC in improving the performance of the professors in the university. The first thing is it wanted to increase the number of teaching hours for every professor to 20 hours a week and the student evaluation of the teachers have to be brought in and finally the assessment of the teachers will be based on an academic performance indicator and this academic performance indicator will in turn be based on a research paper submitted by a particular professor to various journals. So these are the three conditionalities UGC has brought in. Now the present article tries to analyze these conditionalities. With regard to increasing teaching hours of the professors, obviously teaching is a job which involves a lot of research, studying and simplification of the material. So in this context, it is not equal to vomiting of an information. So the number of hours have to be kept minimal and in India if you take if the existing hours they themselves are compared with the universities in the West, the number of teaching hours in India are already high. And second thing is, in Western universities, renowned universities, what they do is, a student, a teacher is asked to teach for courses rather than for hours. Courses, it means that you can structure one course some XYZ subject, and in semester twice you have to choose that or you have to teach that course. So it means if I am teaching governance, so I have to teach the governance twice in a semester. So that's how the contract will be. So how many hours I have to teach the governance for everything will be my discretion. And finally it depends upon the student evaluation to me. So that freedoms have been provided in the western universities which is missing in the UGC guidelines. An output of a teacher is based on the number of hours he is giving to the student. And the next is. The student evaluation of the teachers need to be tightly framed or if not it leads to an element of immaturity. So core course corrections if something goes wrong need to be initiated in the process. Finally, the research articles which are published by a professor, they are not evaluated based on the strength of the article but they are evaluated based on where it got published, which journal it got published. It means that the prestige of journal weighs more than the weight of the article itself. So these are the things which the author is arguing against for. Now coming to the NSG, we know that in Seoul, the NSG members got divided into two groups. Some outrightly opposed for the entry of non-NPT countries. Some countries suggested for bringing in a criteria for the NPT non-NPT countries. So in bringing in criteria for non-NPT countries, um, we have to see certain risks over here. Now, India, if it has to go through, if you see the Shamsarans article, so in bringing in this criteria, if NSG members wants to take a relook um, at NSG waiver or guidelines for the waiver which is offered to India in 2008, um, it is going to uh, damage the India's perspectives or India's um, uh, this thing. So India has to take care in the subsequent deliberations NSG does not revisit um, the terms and conditions of India specific waiver. So it is a slippery slope according to Shamsaran. And the second is why China is um, publicly are uh, taking an upfront position against India's membership at NSG. You can see China is, has become more assertive and it wants to claim its superpower status. And the second is, China and Pakistan relation got strengthened. Because in China, in Xinjiang province, there is this um, extremism and insurgency going on. And support from Pakistan is necessary to curtail these um, Uyghur Muslims getting any support from other Central Asian and Afghanistan. Next is, the China-Pakistan economic corridor is high on the list of Mr. Xi Jinping. And the third thing is, China want to hyphenate India and Pakistan, which US is getting away from. And United States is trying to hyphenate China and India. So in this context, the US is trying to push India into a bigger league 
and China wants to confine India to only South Asia. So these are the various dynamics. And coming to this article, why India in the first place wanted to be a member of NSG? If you see clearly, 2008, India got NSG waiver. NSG waiver means India is eligible to get all the technologies and nuclear imports from the NSG member countries. But from 2010 to 2013, Various guidelines of the NSG got amended, especially the paragraph 6 of the guidelines. What it says is, no non-NPT country shall receive the ENR technologies. ENR stands for Enrichment and Reprocessing Technology. And this technology is very critical for India's three-stage nuclear program. From second stage to third stage, India has to use this reprocessed fuel. So that's why to get this technology India was eager to get into the NSG membership. And coming to global emission norms. Now by 2040 India's energy demand, electricity demand will raise 3.8 times and most of this is going to come from coal itself. But however, as of now, 60% is coming from the coal. It is going to come down to 31%. But however, the amount of the coal consumption by India by and large is going to increase. It is going to add 5% of more of carbon emissions based on 2015 levels. But, and the major improvement will be in the solar energy, in solar photovoltaic cells. It is expected to go up by 31% by 2014 India's electricity share. And coming to nuclear energy, we know that um, we have uh, 63 gigawatts of power by 2032. That is what is the target India aims for through nuclear energy. So, uh, this is what is the status of uh, em uh, emissions and energy requirements of India. And coming to corruption linked fraud. So, we know that corruption is an important topic for us. Um, so, there is something called GFI, Global Fraud Index Report. Um, of 2015-16, it kept the India in the third position with regard to the corruption and bribery related fraud and more than 80% of the companies reported that they got exposed to the corruption. And then Brexit. Now what will happen after the Brexit is the question. Now Brexit, the, the decision are under the referendum given by the people can be reversed by the UK's parliament if necessary because parliament is sovereign and supreme in UK. Now the second thing is uh, the prime minister of UK has to give a notification for UK's exit from European Union. Then the exit process will be initiated. Then once it is initiated, uh, two years both the parties that is UK and EU will be in negotiation on the exit terms. After that, if a deal is been set in, so that has to be approved by 20 members of EU, which constitute at least 60% of the EU population. If the deal is not set, the time can be extended beyond two years through a consensus, or if that is not possible, the consensus is not set in, the UK moves forward along with the WTO restrictions are the trade barriers which have been created. So because of this it will be harmful both to the EU and UK. So this is the procedure. Now coming to the regional divide with regard to the Brexit, you know that UK consists of three things now. One is Northern Ireland, the Great Britain and you have the Scotland. Now the Scotland recently a referendum was held in UK for Scotland freedom and where the country has voted against the Scotland getting away from UK. So in this context, Scotland wants to continue with European Union, but Great Britain do not. So now the Scotland is about to demand for a second referendum to exit itself from UK. So this is what is the thing happening. And coming to the Indian Express, now the Brexit has happened how India has to build the solidarity with the UK and the European Union. The Raja Mohan, what he is talking about. Um, India has to bring in the Commonwealth to the forefront. Um, 
and also as quickly as possible to us to build our close the trade pact with the UK and the European Union that is what is the essence of the article now this article in the explain page is very important for our prelims so this year one question is expected from this what is European Union so it is a common policy framework for a group of countries who are its members so European Union as of now consists of 28 members if the Britain exists it has 27 members it has started as European Economic Community in 1958 with the six countries what are they Germany France Belgium Italy Luxembourg and Netherlands and then what is Schengen area the Schengen area is free movement without any borders across the borders in Europe now European Union members may be members of Schengen area or may not be the members of Schengen area or European the Schengen area also can consist of the members outside European Union now if you take UK Romania Ireland Bulgaria these are not uh, the, uh, member, uh, members of Schengen area but they are the members of European Union now non non European Union countries such as Switzerland, Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein these are the countries of Sch members of Schengen area but not the members of uh, European Union now there is European economic area so here it aim is to promote the free trade among the members it consists of all the European Union members plus uh, the Norway, Liechtenstein, Iceland if you see these three countries are also members of Schengen area but they are not the members of the European Union and in this um, Switzerland is a member of the European uh, uh, Schengen area but not in the European Union but also not in European economic area and the next is Eurozone Eurozone stands for the countries that use Euro as their currency total 19 countries exist over here so in this uh, the Sweden, Denmark, Poland, Czech Republic are part of the Schengen area but they do not have the euro as currency UK is neither a part of Schengen area or do not have the uh, euro as the currency the pound sterling is still the currency so these are the articles which are important for today thank you very much all the best